There's a national championship at the end of it all. But for now, it's chop and saw your absolute best here in Milwaukee and get one of the four spots in the finals. Your passion demands that you deliver today. We're just like everyone who's watching this. I mean, we have jobs, we have mortgages, we have car payments, and we're doing this because we love it. In this format, it, it's, it's all about the next event, you know. You, you focus on what's coming up and you really just try to move to the next one and do the best you can. It's a passion. I've always said that the practice of law is my profession, but lumberjack sports, timber sports is my passion. Time. All the time in the world is not enough to be a great competitor. Every race is down to milliseconds. You have to make a decision in between the time the axe hits the wood till it hits again. In the end, you gotta own your own. You can study and try to copy somebody else, but unless you can own it yourself, you're never gonna get anywhere. Lake Michigan sparkling on a perfect summer day. And we are lakeside here in Milwaukee, the home of the Bucks and the Brewers, a place where people love their sports. And we love the idea of bringing our sport here. The 2017 Steel Timber Sports Series presented by Ram U.S. Championships. 20 top choppers and sawyers from across the United States have assembled here. They have qualified. We've split them into two pools, and today we're concentrating on Pool B. Tommy Sanders here with Kevin Holtz and another load of talent in this pool, including a couple of former national champions. Yeah, guys like Arden Coker Jr., they've been here, they've done this, and, and this is, I don't want to say old hat because anything can happen, but he's been doing this for decades. He's got championships under his belt, but I'm watching guys some of the next generation cutters like Jason Lentz and especially Walt Page. We met this young man a few years ago at Cal Poly and he just shows a level of maturity and calmness that it makes it seem like he's been doing this for decades. 10 of the best in the world striving to make it to the finals. To do that, they're going to have to finish in the top four. When it's all said and done, we work our way through six disciplines, beginning with the springboard chuck. The springboard chop represents a traditional technique, a method for getting above the bulky, hard to cut root flares. These competitors are gonna cut one notch in the tree about three feet off the deck. They'll set a board in that, climb atop that board, repeat the process for a second board. Then they have to go about the work of cutting an 11 inch round lathe turned white pine block at the top. Fastest time wins. Well, let's see how we got our time to beat. In the first heat of the springboard, it would be the rookie Trevor Beaudry. David Moses, Mike Esch, Logan Scarborough facing off, and the veteran David Moses setting the time to beat at just under a minute 10. He's looking for those last far fibers as he slashes through for David Moses. Well, I'm glad it went well. Usually I really struggle with the springboard in the finals. So I'm glad everything went really good and I got off first in my heat. So I'm happy with that. In the next team, Calvin Willard, Arden Kokerchuk, and Matt Mark square off with sight set on that 110 mark. But I'm watching right now on pole six, Matt Mark struggling a little bit to get that second four hole. Get up there, Mark Z. But you know, he's got a lot of stuff going on in life. I think he's coming into the semifinals kind of with a, a nothing left to lose. Let's see what we can do. Maybe this attitude of, man, let's see what happens is going to pay off. Prepping to put up a, a barn, prepping to put up a greenhouse. <laughs> I haven't really been uh, putting my time in as much as I should be, but uh, well, you know how it is, life gets a hold of you. For the three-man competition here, heat number three. Mel Lentz sadly is not in the field this time around. Son Jason Lentz, though, has come and ready to do his very best. A very, very talented axeman. Speaking of which, from the West Coast, Walt Page from up there in the Sierras out in California has done very, very well the past couple of years. And Mike Sullivan, the first ever champion, U.S. champion of the Steel Timber Sports Series, three decades plus, and still going hard. Big fan of the guy on stand number six as well, Walt Page. Look at that first board set. Maybe a little premature. There may have been a chip in there or something. As soon as he set the board, it hung for a second, and then it dropped into place like there was something interrupting its progress. Second board set, beautiful for Walt Page. No hesitation. He is up and swinging. Both Walt Page and Jason Lentz advanced to the finals last year. Walt Page looking like a 
good bet to take it on to the finals this year in 2017. Jason Lentz looking a little bit tentative here. You say he needs to get off to a good start. Well, yeah, and, and the, the talk around here obviously is the mental focus of Matt Coger. And I feel like that's been, and I don't want to say it's a mental shortcoming for, for Jason, but certainly he gets flustered more than you see from Matt Coger. But Walt Page picking up where he's left it off the past couple of years. Just a good, good effort is going to be the top finisher. Who will be? There's Walt Page on that second board set. He's got a great board set, but you see his front foot, he's almost got his toe shoved in that springboard pocket. He's got to be able to get back on that board, extend, and not lose the horsepower. Oh, uh, springboard's always a big one. Uh, you know, it's one of my better events, so I'm happy to lead off with it and start off on a good note. Uh, it's always, always nice to be sitting on top in the beginning. One discipline down, the springboard chop, and out of that tough one comes Walt Page on top. Not a surprise to anyone. We got Matt Marks, David Moses in there, and of course, Jason Lentz expected to do well here, too. Yeah, Matt Marks, I think, was a surprise for me. He's got a wedding coming up. He's building or working on an addition on the house, and he just hasn't been putting the time into it. And I don't know. Something's paying out for him here today. Second place after the first discipline. All right, we'll come back with discipline number two, the stock saw, when we return to Milwaukee. The Steel Timber Sports Series on ABC is brought to you by Ram, powered by Ram Trucks. Guts, glory, Ram. Duluth Trading, designed and tested by tradesmen. And John Deere, nothing runs like a deer. Well, you see the athletes donning the colored jerseys. Each color represents one of the five regions from around the country, the Northeast, the Mid-Atlantic, the Midwest, the West, and the South. Out of 20 athletes in both Pool A and Pool B, the Northeast sent the most with eight competitors, followed by the Mid-Atlantic region with five, the West with four, and the South with two. And the Midwest sent one, that being Cassidy Shear, who you'll see in the finals. Steel Timber Sports presented by Ram U.S. Championships 2017 by Lake Michigan here at the Summerfest Park, home right now for German Fest, a big event to celebrate summer here, and we are ready to go with discipline number two. After the springboard, we head into the stock saw, as we saw in our coverage of Pool A. The stock saw can be, well, pretty cut and dried, or it can absolutely be a disaster. It's the simplest discipline to mess up here, and, and there is very little margin for error. These guys are running equally tuned steel MS661 chainsaws. They get four inches of wood to make two cuts, one down, one up. They have to use every sense, every fiber of their being to keep that saw running at the maximum point on the horsepower and torque curve. You go just a little too heavy, you bog down, you go a little too light, you're just wasting time at that point. So these guys are really in tune with these machines. Let's take a look at how we got our time to beat here in the stock saw in the first heat. The attorney, Arden Coger Jr., faced off against Mike Esch, and it would be Esch setting the pace with an 11.49. But that time wouldn't last long. In the next heat, David Moses would take on Calvin Willard. In trouble for David Moses on stand number one. And it would be the logger, Calvin Willard, setting the pace at 11.38. Jason Lentz coming into the second discipline. The stock saw with fourth place in Ram overall points based on his performance. The springboard chop, Logan Scarborough needing to make up a little ground right here. For the past few years, Tom, we've seen both of these guys do exceptional things in this discipline, and then we've also seen them do exceptionally poor in this discipline. <laughs> so this is uh, this will be a heat to watch. Both these guys are looking for those Ram overall points. Logan Scarborough just rolling into this block and ahead at the switch. Could be a good close one here, but it's gonna be Lentz. Wow. Lentz reeling in Scarborough in that second cut, finds that every last ounce of, of horsepower in those 661s. Logan Scarborough, though, not looking pleased with his cut. Let's take a look at this run from Jason Lentz. He's up into the block, poised over the wood, ends up coming out just behind Logan Scarborough on that switch, but then just puts the coal to it leaning through the top of that block. So Jason Lentz finishing strong there, picking up an 11.06 and picking up top points so far. The competition in the stock saw, Logan Scarborough. 
coming up in second place, dropping Calvin Willard down into third with 11.38. Matthew Marks engineered a runner-up finish in the springboard jump to start out his effort to make it to the finals here. He's going up against the former national champion, Mike Sullivan, a guy who could certainly pick up some points here at the start. But Mike Sullivan is an operator. This man has competed in every single steel timber sports offered. He, he's been around since this, the inception of this of this program, and uh, he's been around these six. Well, when they were 660s and 066, you know, rewinding the clock, he can run this saw, and he needs to run this saw to make up for the springboard. Ah, but come on, Mike Sullivan, way to throw it back in my face, buddy. He had him neck and neck with Matthew Marks, but that one bobble at the bottom. Matthew Mark's going to be the man on top in this heat. Well, here I talk up Mike Sullivan going into this stock saw, and the wheels just completely fall off this cart. He completely misses when he goes for the second cut, moves over too far, overcompensates, and cuts through, severs that purple line. How about Matt Marks, uh, second place in the first discipline? Right now, he's on top in Pool B in the stock saw. One more heat left to go. Jason Lentz, Logan Scarborough, two and three. When you're happy, you're supposed to show it. So that was my show it. <laughs> Walt Page on top for points coming into this second discipline there. He had the win in the springboard chop for the man from up in the Sierras in California. Walt Page going up against Trevor Beaudry out of the collegiate ranks. Good success in college. And trying to make that translate into a pro career. Beaudry looking to make a, make a name for himself in the Steel Timber Sports Series. And typically, Stock Saw is not a rookie favored event. It tends to be one where the mental works just sort of fall apart. Walt Page, though, staying calm, cool, collected, taking a page from Matt Coger in that even keeled stance. Walt Page, two for two, two disciplines and two top finishes, 10 points in each. For Walter Page from California, Matt Marks having a great day. Two second place finishes for Matt Marks, the two most consistent performers. Jason Lentz hanging in there in third place, and Trevor Beaudry knocking out the fourth spot in the stock saw. Look at our Ram overall points after the stock saw, after discipline number two. The top four have not changed in the makeup. We've changed places a little bit, but still we look at Arden Coger Jr. down there, always a qualifier for the finals. Is that, uh, is that a cause for concern for him? You know, two disciplines down, and, and being a veteran competitor, I would have thought we'd see more out of him in the stock saw event. He just didn't pay out. But look at Trevor Beaudry doing himself a whole lot of good a rookie here at the Steel Timber Sports Series, and he's working his way ever closer to those valuable top four positions, the guys that are gonna advance to the finals. We'll be back in Milwaukee, axes in hand, with a standing block when we come back. Oh, and Forrester down on stand number two. Standing block, the log is fixed in a stand uh, in a vertical position. We have to cut halfway through the block on the front side. Beautiful open for that block. That is a, a great, clean, technical cut. Run around and cut the back scarf so that the block falls in the direction of the front scarf. Back in Milwaukee for the Steel Timber Sports Series presented by Ram US Championships for 2017. Who will be competition? Ten of these guys competing here, and only four will pass on to the finals, to the championship round. We're ready for discipline number three, the standing block job. Standing block heat number one is going to be Logan Scarborough, stand number one. Trevor Beaudry, stand number two, and Matthew Marks having a pretty good competition here. Right, gentlemen. Starting out on stand number three. Timers ready. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go. Watching the man on stand number one, I, I feel like he's got to have a breakthrough event, and Logan Scarborough, this could be it. He's around almost sync at the same time in sync with Matt Marks on stand number three. Trevor Beaudry struggling a bit in the front side of this block. Who's it going to be? Scarborough or Marks? Scarborough looks like he's low. Marks is up high. Fresh air to drive into. Matt Marks continues his little uh, his party here in Milwaukee. 
Yeah, there you go. Matt Marks off to a good start with the lead after one heat of the standing block chop, 22.90. Trevor Beaudry and Logan Scarborough second and third. Calvin Willard on stand number one. This is a two-man matchup and going up against the man who's on top. Graham overall points in pool B here, Walt Page. Time to beat Matthew Marks, 22.90. Good for Walt Page. I mean, compared to a lot of other competitors, his years of service to the Timber Sports family is, is certainly a, a lower number than a lot of the other competitors. But he has just come on like a house of fire and it just impresses. Right from day one in the college ranks, we knew we had something special with Walt. But Kelvin Willard, holy cow, is just laying to this. Opens one and one on the backside. Got a little bit off with his rotation there on his two up hits following his opening blows. There he goes, wow. I, yeah, really, I was just saying, I gotta get my mind wrapped around this one. Calvin Willard was around really quick. Maybe didn't quite do enough on the front side of this block. Walt Page exercising a little extra patience in the front of that block, and it paid dividends at the finish. Two great standing block cutters. This, this is the future right here. These guys are showing us where we're going with this sport. The pace of Willard, the reach of Page, should have been off a, a, a whole swing sooner for Calvin Willard, but he does a, a little bit of a short stroke, goes back and rips the top of that block off just in time. Well, yeah, you know, it's hard to uh, stay calm and attack the wood at the same time, but uh, I think sometimes we get a little too relaxed right before an event. Um, so when we can put the two together, be relaxed, but also be aggressive, we can come out pretty good. Well, there you go. That was a close one, but Calvin Willard pulls it off, coming out on top with 20 seconds even. Walt Page in second place with 20.23. They are one and two with one heat left to go. Final heat. Standing block chop here in Pool B. A couple of competitors wearing the blue scheme of jersey there. That indicates the uh, region of origin. Be the Mid-Atlantic for these two West Virginia guys. Jason Lentz right there, big Jason Lentz. Right, and big Arden Coger Jr. Well, these two guys probably have the biggest shot also Three, at, at upsetting two, Matt Coger from championship number five. Arden Coger Jr. just putting his famous pace into it. Jason Lentz. Had a bit of a hang up there in the opening of the block, but he's got a big front face weighted into this block. Arden Coger's gonna, wow! <laughs> I was about to say, Arden Coger better bring some pace because here comes Jason Lentz with that raw horsepower. And, and Jason Lentz has the altitude on his side. He just rakes across the ceiling. You see something as simple as that hang up from Arden Coger Jr has sort of a lasting impact on the next few blows of the ax. There's your Ram overall points after the standing block. It was good to Arden Coger Jr., not so good to David Moses. Trevor Beaudry fell a few spots as well. Yeah, Arden Coger Jr. is working his, his way back up to where we all expect him to be in the top four, but it's still good on Walt Page, right at the top of the heap. Nobody needs to know that he doesn't have decades of experience under his belt. He could win this pool. Former champ Coker Jr. trying to hang on in the top four here. Should be right up his alley. The next event is the single bump. German Fest in Milwaukee, right on the lakefront here on Lake Michigan. A beautiful summer day, great crowd enjoying the best in the business here in the United States, going for the national championship Steel Timber Sports Series. Presented by Ram, only the top four of these 10 in Pool B will make it onto the championship. It's tighter and tighter with each passing discipline. We still got Walt Page on top, and right now Art Kogert still trying to hang on to that fourth spot. Yeah, and we're running out of disciplines at this point. The next discipline is our only hand sawing event. It's the single buck. These guys are going to be running saws that are just over six feet long. They're made of a high carbon tool steel. This event was always traditionally known as the misery whip. But as, as saw technology has advanced and technique has advanced, you can't really claim much misery when these guys are ripping off cuts well under 15 seconds. Contestants ready. There's Matt Marks Three, going up against two, Trevor one, Beaudry. Go. Matt Marks doing really great here. Third place, but just three points out of the lead here held by Walt Page. 
who will be. It, and I think no one is more surprised than Matt Marks. And he, he's really, I mean, not going to win this heat. Trevor Beaudry with a great cut in the single buck. But uh, Matt Marks still right on his heels. And he just keeps gobbling up those Ram overall points. There you go, Trevor Beaudry, a 13.76. Good enough to best Matt Marks, second place with 15.80. Axes and saws are the most common weapons in the professional lumberjack's arsenal, but what about the smaller pieces of gear these athletes must possess to make their competition day run smoothly? Adrian Flicht explains more in our Duluth Trading Flicked Facts. So we've talked about the common tools in the lumberjack's arsenal, the axes, the crosscut saws, the chainsaws, but it's the little things, literally, that help the day keep going steady. Probably the biggest piece of equipment we got is a little bit of lubricant. We gotta have a little bit of protection from rust. Spike shoes. I've got an awesome toolbox dedicated to just maintaining and, and repairing while I'm at a competition. There's a lot of little stuff. Uh, you got race fuels, mixed fuels, JB Weld. I've seen fights break out for the last nubbin of a crayon. Without it, you can't mark your log or where you want your stock saw cut to start. Jason Lentz currently second place in Ram overall points, 25. Started out behind pages 27. Be going up against Logan Scarborough. Logan Scarborough currently Residing outside that top four, he needs to put some overall points on the board. Well, the single buck was one of Logan's claims, claims to fame as he came out of the college Three, ranks. Two, but watch one, for Jason go. Lentz. He's been spending a lot of time with his uh, boyhood chum. I don't know if you've heard of him, Matt Coger. And they've been spending a lot of time with a guy, I don't know if you heard of him, J.P. Mercier. So the, the sawing has really come on big time. And we're seeing it now. I think he's going to win this pretty handily. There it is, Jason Lentz. A decisive win over Logan Scarborough in the single buck. Saw Jason Lentz looking at his saw at the end of that cut and then studying the end of the log. If something was providing some extra resistance, Jason had the horsepower to just kind of hoss it off the end of the block. But you can see some scarring at the end of that log. Maybe a chip was pushing a cutter tooth over to the side and that was causing the scarring. Or he may actually have a bent tooth, knowing the horsepower this guy's laying down. Hey, I got uh, two events left. Uh, just past the halfway point. Uh, cut all right in a single buck. Had a few little bobbles, but uh, yeah, still have one strong event and then hot saw. Well, there you go, Jason Lentz, 1488, good enough for second overall with two heats left to go in that one right there. Logan Scarborough way down there, 18.03, so not his best effort. Here we go with a couple of stalwarts. In the Single buck competition through the years. Mike Sullivan, former national champion from Connecticut, getting ready to go on stand number one. Stand number two, David Moses, Washington State. Had a good start to his day. He's fallen out of that top four, though. Has had both of these guys. Both of them would like to finish up one and two after this heat is done. All right, gentlemen. Timers ready. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go. Moses, an absolute powerhouse in this single buck event. This is one of his strongest disciplines. Look for him to really capitalize on it, pick up some Ram overall points. Sullivan, a great technician, will be right on his heels. Wow, David Moses dropping down in that 13 second range. Watching this cut from David Moses. He's, this man has a tremendous amount of horsepower and he's using every single one. He is running a much more aggressive saw than a lot of guys out there. And just through sheer grit, determination, and an awesome amount of technique, he just powers through the bottom of that log. Well, David Moses with a superlative effort right there and 1336 will take over the top spot in Pool B with one heat remaining.
final heat of the single buck in the foreground there. You can see the impressive figure of Arden Coger Jr., former national champion of the Steel Timber Sports Series. Arden going up against Calvin Willer. Arden Coger Jr. runs a very aggressive Tuatahi three cutter peg and raker single buck saw. And normally I think of those saws as big right, pressure, hoss the wood right, off, right. but he brings a pace ready. to this saw. Three, and it, it, it two, ends up being one, a lethal go. combination. Oh, and a little too aggressive at the top. But we've talked about the bottom of the wood where you're in a smaller diameter log or, or smaller amount of wood. Same holds true at the top, and it bit Arden Coger Jr. figuratively, of course. And it's Calvin Willard coming off. Uh-oh, trouble for Willard. Ah, oh, a tough break for Calvin Willard. He will not get the best of Arden Coger Jr. The wood cookie broke, the saw jumped out. And unlike other cases where we've seen a small uh, pool A, we saw Cassidy Shear with a small uncuttable bit of wood sticking out. In this case, it was a cuttable portion of wood. Watch what happens here at the bottom of the block for Calvin Willard. Clean draw stroke, he comes up, he picks up the heel of that saw. That sets a tooth or a raker on the far side of that cut. You can see, oh, it just comes over and catches his pant leg. He has to keep his composure, he picks the saw back up and has to finish that cut, otherwise it's a disqualification. Arden Coger Jr., once he got past the bobbles in the top of that log, that aggressive saw has more timber to distribute its force over, and it runs much more smoothly. He maintains that through the bottom, hose off the bottom of that block for the heat win. Ram overall points after the single buck. Two disciplines left. Jason Blitz atop the leaderboard. Matt Marks right in there in second place. Maybe a surprise to some. Maybe to you, Kevin. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Walt Page and David Moses make up the top four. Now out of it for the moment. Art Coger Jr. will have to pick up the axe and get it done in the underhand. That's coming up when we return. Back in Milwaukee, getting closer and closer to determining who will pass on to the championship round of the Steel Timber Sports Series. 2017 National Championships. Jason Lentz, son of the famed, famed legendary American Lumberjack, Mel Lentz, standing atop the leaderboard right now. Matt Marks from New York State. Walt Page, another Western guy out there in the mix. And David Moses, in fact, two Western guys making out the top four, but lots more points to be shifted around as we head into the underhand shot. The underhand chop, our competitors are going to stand on top of this lathe turned white pine. And guys like Arden Coger Jr., who are just outside the bubble right now, they're going to be putting on some of the best chops of their lives working on getting in. A great chop is going to be a clean cut. You want to look for pairs of hits, big chips falling out of the block, and not a lot of dancing around up there. You want your feet planted to get as much power behind the axe as possible. Heat number one, the underhand. It's going to be from left to right, Logan Scarborough. Stand number one, Matthew Marks to the right of him. Then Mike Sullivan and Walt Page. Walt Page having dropped into a tie for second place in Ram overall points. It's Jason Lentz on top right now. All right, gentlemen. Timers ready. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go. Matt Marks, we were talking just briefly earlier today, and, and he is just, he's, yeah, here he goes again with a, a great underhand cut. He is just, I feel like he's just winging today, and it's totally working. I'm also watching stand number four, the former Walt Page, a West Coast competitor, a great underhand cutter. He's got a beautiful back face open on that, and it is, it's Walt Page finishing off very cleanly. Here we see Walt Page to the right of Mike Sullivan. Walt just taking apart this block very cleanly, reaching way down for those bottom hits, staying up nice and high for the top hits. Knows he's got just a fiber left, came up just a little bit, kind of between a bottom hit and a middle hit, and just drove through the bottom of that block. Walt Page hanging in with a tough performance here. Semi-final round, Walt Page with the lead 25.85 after the first heat of the underhand chop, followed by Scarborough Marks. Mike Sullivan. Here we go, three choppers here. Trevor Beaudry, Calvin Willard, and David Moses. Trevor Beaudry on the left there has a lot of ground to gain. He's just a point right, out gentlemen. of the top four at this Time point. Ready. Contestants ready. 
three, two, one, go. Yeah, and just inside that top four is a man, two positions to the right, David Moses. Beaudry around very quickly. Moses around a little bit further behind. This could be a case of uh, youth and enthusiasm getting the best of both. Now. Wow. Beaudry off. Wow. What a great cut for Trevor Beaudry. That's exactly what he needed. And look at this, Calvin Willard inserting himself between Beaudry and Moses. That, those are ram points right there that Beaudry just picked up. Look at thumbs up from Trevor Beaudry. He knows how big that was. Saw his opportunity and he took it. With that effort, Trevor Beaudry, who came up through the Steel Collegiate Ranks, is our nominee for the John Deere Nothing Runs Like a Deer performance. Big, huge slabs of wood falling out of both of those blocks. Calvin Willard just leaving a bit too much wood hanging up on the bottom there. And Trevor Beaudry motoring through the backside of that block. So I started back in college. I won the Northeast region for the collegiate thing in um, 2014 and competed in the um, collegiate championships that year. And so nose to the grindstone, worked hard, got my resume in, made it into the Pro Series 2015. And then, you know, climbing along, training hard, and finally broke through and made it out of my qualifier this year and made it to the semifinals. There you go, Trevor Beaudry taking the top spot in Pool B with one heat remaining. Trevor Beaudry seeing an opportunity and a chance to move into the top four. Calvin Willard holding in second place, and Walt Page, 25-8-5's got him in third. Final heat of the underhand. It's gonna be Mike Esch on the left on stand number one. Jason Lentz, currently a Ram overall points leader here in the pool. Coming into this discipline right here, the underhand chop. And Arden Coger Jr., who was tied one point outside the top four with Trevor Beaudry before this event started. And now everything's changed. So right, Trevor Beaudry's position Time and Arden right. Coger's position, Contestant depending upon ready. this chop. Yeah, a lot of eyes three, on stand two, number three one, right now. Go. Arden Coger Jr., exceptionally fast swing speed from this guy, a great underhand cutter. He motors through these blocks, and, and he's obviously gunning to be under that 19-second mark. He's got himself really pinched in on this block, though. That's trouble for, uh, he got it. Boy, that could have turned very disastrous. 1840, unofficially showing on the clock. That's gonna put him on the top of the heap in this uh, underhand for pool B. So let's take a look at where this almost went very poorly for Arden Coger Jr. You see that opening blow on the bottom side on his left side really kicked in on him. He brings both sides in. Now he's pinched out. He has almost no cuttable wood, and he's just, he's kind of hacking at whatever's left, just trying to break that block. He pulls off a time in the 18 second range. This should be good enough for a heat win. Yeah, this is my 30th year on the Steel Timber Sports Series. Um, and so I started competing before I was actually allowed to compete because of my age. And, you know, the, the years are numbered for me, and I have to accept that and move on. Uh, it's good to get a win, and it was a good cut. I'll take that. Uh, my, my cousin Matthew made a wonderful cut in the previous pool. And so, you know what? Whatever happens and the chips fall where they may, if I make the finals, great. If I don't, so be it. You know, it's always next year. The underhand is done. Five disciplines down and one to go. Still Jason Lentz on top page. Marks and Arden Coger Jr. hanging in there. Tough in fourth place, but a great opportunity for one point back. Trevor Beaudry as we head into the hot saw, which can be an upsetter on so many levels. The Steel Timber Sports Series on ABC is brought to you by Ram, powered by Ram Trucks, Guts, Glory, Ram. Duluth Trading, designed and tested by tradesmen. And Dinty Moore, Dinty Moore Beef Stew, the beer of meals says you work hard. Crack open a Stewski.
So tonight we are here in Milwaukee at the world's only Harley Davidson Museum. Obviously, Milwaukee means a lot to us. We are, this is our birthplace, this is our home for more than 114 years now. And tonight for bike night, we were lucky enough to have some steel timber athletes on site. Yeah! Since the beginning, power, precision, uh, uh, those have been hallmarks for Harley Davidson. So it was really neat to see the still de demonstration here with those timber athletes. And I think our customers really got behind it because they have such an affinity for their machines. They saw what it takes to have that power and precision in your hands. Uh, and I think everybody walked away impressed. One more event, one more discipline to go before we decide who the four are who will pass to the championships here in the Steel Timber Sports Series National Championships 2017 here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Arden Coger Jr., the former national champion, is holding on to that fourth spot, but he's a slim one-point margin ahead of Trevor Beaudry, who's kind of maybe labored in the background. This is his chance to get right into the spotlight here, Kevin. Yeah, it's not where you want to be as a rookie, though, to rely on one of the tumultuous events here. And, and one of the guys we haven't talked about at all, Mike Sullivan, way down in terms of Ram overall points, but by far the strongest hot saw operator in this field. He can totally come up and steal some Ram points from somebody that needs it or, or get in between two people that are, that are vying for that top four position. I think we're going to have a points mess on our hands going into this uh, hot saw event. First tee to the hot saw, David Moses on the left. Right there's Mike Esch, pretty big cut for David Moses. He's the second man out of the top four right now. Pretty much incumbent upon him to make three good cuts. Not only that, making three complete cuts and a good Get time set. as well. There he goes, there he looks, that looks like, oh, maybe not, hold on, hold the phone. That looked like three great cuts, but man, is that last one a big one. Rich Hallett's got one cookie in his hand that he doesn't seem really fond of. He's gonna go over and talk to Don Quigley. Flags are flying all over the place here. Oh, there it is. We got the thumbs up. That's as official as it gets right there. The thumbs up from Rich Hallett for David Moses. There's a big sigh of relief after a tough go in the underhand job. Oh, and trouble for Mike Ash, where I had my eyes on David Moses this whole time. Super thin cutout on the first one, followed up by a super thick one on the second one and a cutout on the third one. That's, uh, that's unfortunately three strikes for uh, for Mike Ash. Wow, look at how thin that second cut is for David Moses. All the way up through, just a chain width of wood left on the outside of that log. A close shave for David Moses right there, but all comes out well in the end. Three cuts and a respectable time. 7.78, he's done his job. He can only sit and wait. Watch the rest of these four heats of the hot saw play out. Well, the former champion, Arden Coger Jr. But in fourth place and a single point ahead of Trevor Beaudry. He's put on a pretty good stand here in the last couple of events. say he's done just that as far as this pool goes those are some nice clean consistent cuts let's watch this run from Arden Coger Jr. quick down to the saw a little bit of a hesitation I don't know if the the RPMs just didn't come up on the motor but then look at the consistency three nice consistent discs not too fat not too skinny just right well, there it is, Arden Coker Jr. has made a statement. I am in this thing. I want to advance to the finals, lays down the best time so far after two heats, a 7.45. That sort of throws down the gauntlet in the direction of Trevor Beaudry.
third heat of the hot saw. Walt Page and Matt Marks currently standing number two and number three in the standings. Matt Marks, we say, in third place, but still just two points ahead of Trevor Beaudry, who's in fifth. A lot of chips flying on stands one and stand two. Matt Marks shaking his head. Walt Page, well, Walt Page doesn't react to anything, so it's hard to say what's going on over there. Let's watch this run again for Walt Page with his, uh, his DC-created Honda Misfit built-up hot saw. Let's take a look at Matt Marks, see what he was shaking his head about. First cut looks good. Second cut, I, I think he may have had it, but he went back and reshot anyways. Third cut, he had to come over, was running out of wood. It may be in question on the, the inside, uh, bottom inside of that cut, whether he got the line. But I think he's just disappointed that he didn't have a clean run. He knows that leaves a window open for, uh, well, Trevor Poultry mainly to come in and, and take that qualifying spot away from him. Well, there you go. In Ram overall points, it was Walt Page and Matt Marks, second and third. Both of them laid down a cut, and here they are in heat points right here. And discipline points, second and third. So they've done their jobs. Not completely out of the woods yet, especially Matt Marks, but they did about all they could do. A contrast in power heads, a contrast in builders here. Stand number one, the, the relatively new generation, the Dennis Calhoun, the DC Motorsports, uh, Honda-based motor in the, the chainsaw of Calvin Willard. Trevor Beaudry running what I call the, the classic standby. It's been around forever. The, the Russ Lemke Rotax-powered machine. And uh, a lot of guys are making the switch over to the, to the DC Motorsports, the Honda Motors. There's still a lot of these Rotaxes out here, though, as well. well Trevor Beaudry certainly has got an opportunity right in front of him here. If he can put down the best time of the day, he's got a shot at making it into the top four with a saw that has the bar inscription Hipster Repellent. We'll need to get the story behind that a little later on. More important things right now. Trouble on the up cut for Trevor Beaudry. Maybe a little bit aggressive. The saw ran out of fuel. I'm not sure what. But bigger trouble over on stand number one, Tommy. I don't see a lot of purple left on that log. Let's watch this run from Calvin Willard. First cut right on the money, just where he needed to be. Oh, there it is, a cutout at the bottom. Gets that second cut in and then really loses it on this third cut and lays down a butcher block. A tough break for Calvin Willard. He was just going for it. Let's watch Trevor Beaudry here. Stand number two, right? I was just gonna say, right about in the middle of the block, it's like he ran out of fuel, something happened, wasn't getting enough fuel delivery to that carburetor, but he holds on to it, keeps it, uh, keeps it reeled in, and gets three cuts on the deck. Trevor Beaudry would like to have had the best time, especially to get himself up above Arden Coger Jr. He did not get that job done, a 7.60. So it's not looking really good for Trevor Beaudry right now, but we got one more heat left to go before we decide this thing. Final heat of the hot saw. Mike Sullivan right there. Pretty good ways back, but Jason Lentz hanging on to that top spot. Rim overall points coming in here. If he can take care of business, it will be on to the finals for him. Hands on the wood. Get set. Mike Sullivan wow. <laughs> just went out putting on a clinic in the hot saw. That's what you do when you're Mike Sullivan. Watch this run from Mike Sullivan. Cord flying out of his hands into the block. Clean, consistent cuts on the throttle. Gets a little heavy on that last one. How about that, Mike Sullivan really blowing him away here. Pool B is won in the hot saw by the man from Connecticut. Jason Lentz, Arden Coger Jr. and Walt Page hang in there in the top four.
It's time for the Ram Guts and Glory moment, powered by Ram Trucks, official truck of the Steel Timber Sports Series. Our Ram Guts and Glory moment goes out to Matt Marks for his overall performance, which solidifies his spot in the championship. Maybe this attitude of, man, let's see what happens is gonna pay off. It's a good day, a good solid day. And I had a good cheering squad too. Okay. Here we go, the hot saw is complete in the Wiley veteran Art Coger Jr. shoring up his position in the finals along with Jason Lintz, Walt Page, and Matt Marks. Trevor Beaudry had a shot and he had to beat Art Coger. He just couldn't get the job done this time around, but there'll be a next time for Trevor Beaudry. You can count on that. So those four will move on to the championships and that's what we'll have for you next time on the Steel Timber Sports Series presented by Ram US Championships 2017.